Thank you very much. So now let's go and start again. Good evening and welcome to the English Learner Roundtable hosted by Maryland State Board of Education, the Maryland State Department of Education, and CASA. My name is Gustavo Torres, and I am the Executive Director of CASA. It is my pleasure to facilitate this virtual roundtable and to welcome the State Board of Education member Chuenchin Bianca Chan, Superintendent Mohamed Chandari, our roundtable participants, our interpreters, and our viewers on YouTube Live. Para nuestros espectadores en vivo de YouTube que necesitan interpretación, inicie sesión en el enlace de Zoom, en el chat. For those of you who are joining us on Zoom for interpretation, Click the globe at the bottom of your screen and select Spanish, Japanese, Korean, or Haitian Creole. We at CASA work in close collaboration with an extraordinary network of black and brown education advocates and their partners to push our state to address long barriers that prevented all of our children from realizing their potential. These collected advocacy efforts result in a remarkable piece of legislation that we now seek to turn into reality and everyday practice. Today's roundtable conversation represents an important opportunity to not only help our state education department plan the implementation of the blueprint, but even more importantly, ensure that the implementation is informed and guide by the experiences of those students and families that will be most affected by the changes we will see. That's why CASA is happy to support the State Board of Education and MSDE with this round table and other engagement events to make sure that Marylanders, especially English learners and our multilingual communities are able to share their experiences and ideas about the future of education in Maryland. The Blueprint for Maryland's Future established a work group for English learners to improve the education of multilingual students in Maryland. In December 2021, the work group released its interim report, which includes eight preliminary recommendations. Tonight's roundtable will focus on several of these topics that the work group is studying in order to implement the recommendations. We will hear from students, families, educators, and community organizations about the assets of English learners and multilingualism, multilingual community engagement and involvement, and how we can better prepare all teachers to support English learners in their classrooms and communities. Now, we will hear from Superintendent Chordori for his opening remarks. Superintendent, please, you go ahead. Thank you, Gustavo. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, uh, facilitating today and co-hosting with us and the State Board of Education. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Mohamed Chaudhary, uh, State Superintendent of Schools. I'm still fairly new to Maryland. I'm going on nine months, um, but I am excited to be here. I am excited and honored to be uh, your State Superintendent. And I'm just happy looking around this room today, right? Like this is what I call America in miniature. Um, and, and, you know, and Maryland is a microcosm of what our country um, looks like and will look like. And I'm excited to be in an area, uh, a, a position that is looking to uh, uh, refine our education system and build it in a way um, in this era of the blueprint for Maryland's future law or what I call the blueprint generation um, in, in a way that gets it right for everyone. And one of those um, uh, student groups that we must get it right for is English language learners. Uh, we have over 100,000 English language learners and it is growing. Um, which is a beautiful thing. Um, you know, it is a personal topic to me. Um, you know, I started as a 
um, as an ESL teacher back in my hometown of Los Angeles. Um, my family, um, had, uh, you know, came in not speaking uh, a lot of English um, or hardly any, and that they had to navigate the challenges of this country. And I just remember my brother and I helping my mom with so many things and challenges. And so I am happy to be here. I'm excited. Um, as Gustavo said, we have a work group, uh, the Blueprint for Maryland's Future Law, charged uh, the department to put together a work group, which has been put together to ultimately make a set of policy recommendations um, that will shape um, our uh, assembly in Annapolis to essentially pass laws and ultimately the state board to adopt regulations to influence the con learning conditions um, um, that our English language learners immersed in. It might not sound like a big deal, but it is. Uh, policy plays a big part in what we can do um, and or cannot do. Um, with that, um, I want to give uh, my uh, two state board members, uh, Lori and Bianca, who are here. Um, they're one of two of fourteen of my bosses, as I like to say, and 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 I have enjoyed working closely with them. And I would like for them to be able to share um, um, anything that they want to share. Again, thank you so much for your time. I know it's a busy time. It's an interesting time, as we you know uh, during the COVID era. But I really appreciate you joining us and engaging with us and thank you Casa again for uh, host co-hosting with us. Uh, Lori, Bianca, would you like to share anything? So I, I just want to say thank you um, to everyone that is in attendance tonight and, and certainly to all of the um, MSDE staff and to Casa and the interpreters who are making this happen, um, recognizing that, that this you know, highlight some of the challenges that we have at school and and trying to reach every family. Um, and it's something that as as we move forward, as we work on the blueprint, um, it is it is one of our top priorities to make sure that everybody is included, that that this education in Maryland works for all students and all families. So um, thank you all for being here. i'm I'm excited to join and and to hear the conversation tonight. Hi, my name is Chin Chin Bianca Chen, and I echo my colleagues, uh, Lori, and uh, our superintendent, uh, Mr. Chowdhury. Yeah, tonight, welcome you, and uh, I'm so glad that CASA can set up this platform for us to reach out to you and also hear your concern and what we can do better as a state board uh, member and the uh, MSDE. So we like to leave uh, plenty of time for you to ask many questions. If we cannot answer, we are going to put our heads together. And um, let's uh, begin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maryland is very lucky to have three of you extraordinary leaders. Thank you so much for caring about the public education. We really appreciate that. So before we get started, I'd like to go over a few expectations and housekeeping items. We are live streaming and recording this roundtable on YouTube from 6 to 7.30 p.m. and your participation implied consent to be recorded. For our roundtable participants, please speak clearly and slowly for effective interpretation. When you are not speaking, please stay mute and use the chat function. If we are not running, if we are running short of time and there are additional comments you would like to add. As we transition into our questions, we are looking forward to hearing about your honest experiences and creative ideas for how we can better support multilingual students and communities. We have a lot to discuss and limited amount of time for all of our participants to share. Each participant chose questions that are most important to them to discuss this evening. So we will be calling on you for those specific questions to make sure everyone, everyone is able to share. If you are viewing on the live stream, you can use the chat to ask questions and make comments throughout the evening. We will try to address those toward the end of the round table and MSDE will use that feedback to inform our planning as well. 
we also ask that you avoid mentioning the specific names of schools, teachers, school staff, and students to protect their privacy. So now let's go with the questions. But before that, please introduce yourselves when you answer the question. Tell us your first name, school, district, and your role as a student, family member, or educator. For this question, I will ask to ask Maria, Jusaline, bilingual early childhood educator, Carolina and Maria, Gabriela and Edwin, and Tema. The question is the following. English learners education can focus too heavily on what students lack. The Blueprint English Learner Workgroup recommended shifting that thinking to focus more on a student's strength and contributions. How is this happening at your local school or in your community? How can schools promote the strength of English learners better? Go ahead, Maria. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I'm Maria Ibrahim Hale. I'm a junior in Annapolis High School, and I'm from Afghanistan. I came to U.S. about uh, seven months ago, and I came to my school only one month ago. But during this short amount of the time, I could realize that the teachers here are so supportive. Um, I could find many uh, different opportunities here in this school in my school, um, like many different kinds of uh, college prep scholarships for uh, juniors. And I applied for that. And also there are many kind of summer uh, enrichment programs and mentorships. And I uh, signed up for college classes uh, in the summer. And also I applied to the Chesapeake language project to helpfully uh, work with a, a mentor to get ready for college. And I mean, I say these all of things because um, we have these kind of opportunities here. And also for students that um, um, they learn English as their second language, um, they are in ASL classes. We have a special programs called ASL program, ASL classes for students who they learn English as their uh, second language. And it, it, these cl uh, classes have five uh, different levels and they um, make the uh, schedules for students uh, according to their levels to their levels of English and according to their uh, levels of mathematics, science, each and everything. And when I first came to this school, um, because it was my first time in U.S. high school and I didn't have any idea about the system here, but my teachers really helped me. Um, Actually, they um, put me in some low level classes because they wanted me to feel better uh, in these classes. But because I liked the challenging classes, I, uh, the teachers helped me to be in higher classes and um, get STM um, classes and subjects as much as I want. And now I'm happy in these classes and in this school. And in my school it really helps um, uh, the students who learn English as their second language by these ESOL programs. And it's really helpful, I think, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your experience. We really appreciate that. Now we want to hear, we want to hear from the bilingual early childhood educators, Carolina and Maria. Carolina and Maria, please, you go ahead. Oh, 
Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Carolina Reyes. I'm also an immigrant. And um, uh, I immigrated from Chile. And I'm going to speak in Spanish so I can reach out to my community, OK? Bueno, eh, la verdad que estoy muy contenta de participar en esta mesa redonda con esta diversidad cultural tan linda que tiene Maryland. Y una de las cosas um, más importantes que me ayudó a crear la escuelita preescolar que nosotros tenemos acá en Prince George County es con la idea de promover la educación bilingüe y para también abrazar la diversidad hermosa que tiene Maryland. Entonces, somos como un mini país aquí en Maryland. Y por, no, ¿y por qué no tomar... I'm sorry, estoy escuchando un montón de cosas de background. So. No, please, you go ahead. I'm sorry. It's about the recording. Please, you go ahead. Yeah. Continue. I'm sorry. Okay. About Entonces, um, respondiendo a la pregunta de, de, qué, de cómo podemos abrazar las fortalezas de los estudiantes, yo principalmente diría abrazar la diversidad cultural que cada de los estudiantes trae a las escuelas. Y segundo, promover y asegurar a nuestras familias que son emigrantes, que mantener el idioma nativo o, o primario es esencial, que inglés va a venir sí o, no, sí o sí a la vida de nuestros hijos, porque la mejor manera de poder aprender un idioma es estar inmerso en el idioma. Por lo tanto, nosotros aquí en, en el centro preescolar que servimos a niños de dos hasta cinco años, Tratamos de decirles a nuestras familias la importancia de ser multilingüe. Multilingüe y mantener más de uno, dos o tres idiomas es esencial. Y yo creo que el estado de Mérida debería de abrazar esta idea para poder continuar y promover más eso en la escuela pública. Me gustaría ver mucho más escuelas públicas que puedan continuar con uh, la, el apoyo y, la pro, y, y promover eh, la importancia de la educación bilingüe. Una de las cosas que yo puedo decir es que cuando los niños entran a kindergarten, hemos escuchado que la, que, que la, 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 la teira de, de, dice que muchos niños no están listos para entrar y la mayoría muchas veces son niños inmigrantes o latinos, pero a la misma vez me pregunto yo, ¿por qué estos niños no son evaluados en su idioma? Yo creo que deberíamos también ver eso. Yo creo que los niños sí están preparados, pero si lo estamos evaluando en un idioma que no es de ellos, obviamente vamos a tener una información de, que no va a ser la adecuada. Entonces, mi, mi, mi sugerencia sería abrazar esa fortaleza, traer más eh, maestras que puedan hablar el idioma de los niños y así podemos de alguna manera ayudar. Otra cosa que agregaría es abrazar, abrazar a las familias, abrazar a la cultura de estos niños que hablan otro idioma. Es importante. Muchas veces no hemos encontrado que en las escuelas públicas alrededor donde yo estoy, muchas mucha de mi familia de la comunidad latina, por ejemplo, no sabe los recursos disponibles para ellos. Entonces necesitamos hacer una campaña a, a nivel de Estado para que nuestras familias puedan entender todos los recursos que están, porque hay, hay recursos, pero muchas veces ellos no saben lo que hay. Y lo que más, la otra cosa que diría yo también es que um, es importante que um, las familias estén más involucradas en la educación del niño y yo creo que eso se puede hacer más tal vez haciendo escuela para padres. Así, de escuela para padres le llamo yo en el sentido de que ellos necesitan saber también el desarrollo del niño o cómo podemos ayudarlo. So, yo le voy a dar a mis pasos ahora para que ella también opine. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es María Paz. Um, con respecto a, a lo que hablaba Carolina, yo soy madre de tres niñas. Eh, llevo, llevamos dos años viviendo en este país y la verdad, el proceso de enseñanza para mis tres hijas en ISO, eh, sí a ellas les ha servido, pero con respecto de involucrar a los padres, a las familias, yo encuentro que ha sido súper escaso. 
porque somos una, una familia súper comprometida con lo que es educación, sobre todo de nuestras hijas, pero me gustaría saber en qué momento nuestros hijos van avanzando, porque no tenemos esa información tan detallada. Así que eh, me gustaría en ese sentido eh, involucrarnos más. Eh, hay muchas familias que están interesadas en ese aspecto, y, y, y que tienen ganas de participar, pero lamentablemente la limitante del idioma eh, a veces hace que la familia no se involucre. Entonces me gustaría que fuese más... Eh... A, a, a la Carolina, can I ask you a can you, yeah. can you summarize this in English? You don't mind to mention that everybody understood and what you say? Gustavo, the consecutive interpreter will provide the interpretation. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Please, you go ahead. Continue. Oh, okay. So, should I in English or Spanish? <laughs> okay, I just want to finalize um, to say that one of the ways that it can be possible is this. For instance, Miss Paz, she is an immigrant with a, a bachelor's degree in early childhood education, and she doesn't speak English, but she is a great a teacher who is embracing and promoting, you know, Spanish because we want to provide this to the community around here. So when we bring our own diverse, you know, people to the group and things can be achieved, can be achieved. And I think that there's a few states in the state in the United States who are promoting bilingual education. And I know for certain, I, I live in Seattle for many, for two years, and I know that Washington State is embracing that so beautifully. So maybe we can guide that. So I just want to add really quickly, Gustavo. So one of the things you would be happy to know, Paz, is um, our interim recommendations in the report says that we want to scale dual language immersion schools all across Maryland. So I'm coming from Texas. And so, and then before that, Los Angeles. So Maryland uh, needs to catch up here. And so we will be scaling uh, dual language education. And so we want more people like you so um, in many different languages so we can have as you said uh, speaking uh, multiple idiomas is essential um, and so I heard you loud and clear on that I heard you, you loud and clear about ensuring that we have parent workshops um, parents want to learn more about how to help their kids and I heard you loud and clear, clear Carolina that you said parents want to be involved but language is still a barrier um, yes. and we need to make sure that we do better. So, um, you know, I, I lost some of my Spanish when I left Los Angeles, yeah. so I'm still practicing. Uh, so, so I think I got the gist of it, but know yes. that Maryland will be a state that prioritizes dual language immersion and 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 uh, it, it is an asset. So I'm um, sorry. Just, I, well, I just I one more thing, may I add something else very quickly? Please. I think it's important too, to be able to promote that acquiring another language is an asset, no a problem. And that is something that we really need to work on. A lot of families sometimes had come to my center and I'm a bilingual preschool. And they say, but what are you gonna do when my kids go to school? They don't speak Spanish. What are they gonna do with it? So we really need to promote the importance and provide the research to our community to understand why it's so relevant to be multilingual. That's it, thank you. Carolina, thank you. You look like that you are from Casa. So an extraordinary advocate. Really appreciate that. Uh, super. <laughs> thank you very, very much. So, so um, I just have a question for the interpreter. You want to summarize this or how you want to do it? Because I think that we got the picture here. She just did it in English. So I'm Yeah, I thought it was beautiful. I think that that's is great. Why so I'm a bit, that's why I'm a bit confused as to what, if you want me to interpret for somebody specific in when when you start asking questions or I'm just a bit confused. As I to think this is one of those where it worked out where um, where, you know, uh, uh, Paz and Carolina can switch it up, uh, demonstrating the asset that multilingualism is. And so she you made go. your job easier. Right. So on to the next one. And when we have the next one, we might need you. But uh, yeah. so, you, are also, you, are, you are also essential, Diana. So, so well, will you stop? <laughs> will you will you tell me when you need me? Or am I just going to jump in? Or 
Diana, I will. Diana, I will let you know. Okay. Okay. Let you know. Thank you very okay. much. Perfect. Carolina and Maria, thank you very much. Now I want to call Gabriela and Edwin. Gabriela, okay. are you there? I am here. So please. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Gabriela Gomez, and I'm a community school coordinator at the amazing Oxon Hill Elementary School. But first, I am going to let Edwin, one of our students there, um, speak. Um, so, yo soy Gabriela Gámez y soy la, uh, la coordinadora de escuelas comunitarias en nuestra excelente escuela de Oxon Hill. Y voy a dejar que, que Edwin, uno de nuestros estudiantes, comparta su opinión. Edwin. Eh, hola, buenas tardes a todos. Este, vengo a dar mi opinión que es sobre qué necesitamos para mejorar nuestro rendimiento de aprendizaje de inglés. Eh, mi opinión sería agregar unas cuantas horas a la escuela general, tanto como a ISO, clases especiales sería, eh, en mi opinión, sería muy importante para nosotros porque así desarrollamos más rápido nuestro inglés y sería un poco más rápido y poco mejor. Porque si bien a veces tenemos, eh, estamos en clases generales y a veces otra... Edwin, otra... Edwin, Edwin me disculpas un segundito. Diana, is, Diana, is your moment to have the interpretation for Edwin, ¿ok? Can you um, hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Very well, super well. Please, okay. you go ahead. Um, Edwin, good afternoon. My name is Edwin, um, and I'm here to give my opinion about how we can um how we can have our moment to um to to, to um, develop more of our language skills um i understand that we are in general classes and we also have uh special classes but i i'd like to have more hours in those classes so that we can uh so that we can so my opinion is that we should have more hours in those classes so that we can develop our language skills. Thank you, Diana. Edwin, please, you go ahead and pause. Y haces una pausa para que Diana te traduzca. OK, Edwin? OK. Muchas gracias. Adelante. OK. okay. Eh, como decía, eh, para mí sería, eh, eh, sería muy importante este agregar eh, más horas porque si bien a veces estamos en clases generales tenemos que ir a clases especiales o también a ISOL y eso a veces los eh, los interrumpe y para mí sería muy bien sería muy buena idea para mí este que agregara más horas porque así podemos hacer tranquilamente las clases generales tanto como las especiales y las de ISOL sería mucho más mejor porque así aprendemos mejor y sería mejor porque si bien uh, como repito sería mejor porque a veces eh, los interrumpen si bien estamos en algo importante en clases generales tenemos que ir a especiales así y a veces no nos da tiempo en terminar eh, lo que queremos o sea Edwin, Edwin para un momentito que Diana te va a traducir okay Diana please you go ahead you are amazing Edwin it is extraordinary go ahead Diana um, as I was saying, we, I would like more hours because we do have general classes, but we also have special classes and we also have ESOL classes and we, we learn, but we, we, we do get interrupted in uh, these classes and sometimes we don't have uh, time to finish certain activities. So I, so I would like to get more hours because it would be better for me. Thank you. Edwin, continúa, por favor. Ok, y así podemos terminar, nuestras termi eh, podemos terminar nuestras actividades tranquilos, sin, eh, sin tan rápido, porque, eh, repito, a veces eso los interrumpe y eso a veces los afecta también, porque tanto como en clases especiales, y tanto como en clases especiales y, y normales, porque a veces eh, no terminamos lo que queremos y... Y por eso, eh, eso sería todo mi opinión. Edwin, muchísimas gracias por tu intervención. Te agradezco muchísimo y te mereces un aplauso, ¿oíste? Muchísimas gracias. 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 Diana, please, you go ahead. So, um, this way, if we had more hours, um, we could finish our activities and we wouldn't have to rush or we wouldn't have to go as fast 
in our activities because this also affects the way we learn and the way um, we process things. So it would just be easier that way we can focus on each of our classes <laughs> and in each of our activities in the different classes that we have. But that would be um, the best for me and that is pretty much my opinion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gabriela. Please, you go ahead. Uh, you have an extraordinary student. So anyway, please, you go ahead. Thank, Thank you. you, Edwin. Muchísimas gracias, Edwin, por tu, yes. uh, tu, tu uh, valor de venir y hablar aquí con, con nosotros hoy. Thank, Thank you, you, Edwin, for having, you know, the courage to come and speak to us today. So, um, I wanted to share a little bit more of, uh, or go over what Edwin um, started to say. So I, I think what he was referring to was he only gets 30 minutes of English classes with his teacher, okay? And Edwin is one of our students and what we support our newcomers, which is uh, the new Newcomer Academy. Um, so what he was referring to more hours is he would like to have more ESO hours um, so he can catch up and, and, and get more, more of his work done. Um, so some of the things that we have done uh, as a school and as a county level is that we have done for our teachers um, cultural sensitive teaching professional development. Okay, that is key so that our that our teachers understand the community that they are serving, and that is going to look different in each community. Okay, we um, of course we have an excellent um, ESO program in in our county, um, and and we we give like as I stated before, Edwin is part of a newcomer academy because we want to support them as much as they as we can to a newcomers and then transition them into the regular classes. But I think Edwin wants more. <laughs> That's what he was saying. Um, we also have, in, in order to make some of the, re some of the resources avail available to our parents, we have a wonderful interpreting and translation office in our county. And, and uh, most of our communications goes, goes out in English, Spanish, and French. So we serve the three biggest languages, but we also have, we can request interpreters, okay, with, with that. Um, um, I think how we, that's one, that's just one way of how we can um, assist our, our, our learning English students um, instead of, of what they lack and just give them what they, they need or, or emphasize the things that, that, they, that they have to offer our community. So I also believe that we can enhance some of their talents uh, with arts, um, with music, uh, because you know we have to tap into all of those talents from our students. Okay, so now, um, Diana, I'm gonna say it in Spanish, okay? So you don't have no, to- No, you, you don't have to, you don't have to say it in Spanish. Okay. No, thank you very, very much, Gabriela. Perfect. I really appreciate that. Thank no you. No problem. So, so both of you, Gabriela and Edwin, mil gracias. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Really appreciate that, okay? okay. Uh, and now we want to hear from the last person in this panel is Tema, who is an educator. Tema, please, you go ahead. Hi, my name is Tema Encarnacion. I'm an um, ESOL teacher or multilingual educator in Anne Arundel County. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of context around our school. We have about 2,200 students, and of those students, um, 430 of them are multilingual learners, which is about 20% of our school, and then about 41% of our students are um, either heritage or native speakers, but don't participate in the ESOL program. And so some of the things that we've been doing at our school to, um, to shift our thinking as it relates to multilingual students is and to, to frame as other people have said, they're uh, learning the second language as an asset and what it brings to our school is we're really looking to leverage their multilingualism. So we're doing that through bilingual classes. We're supporting students. So a couple, we have a couple of bilingual classes that are both in English and Spanish, and then also supporting students' first language, which for most of our students is Spanish, um, and our content teachers with bilingual teachers and then providing bilingual materials. We've also recently this year um, are starting to administer our state testing in Spanish 
we're that's a slow process but we're into that and that's um that's going to be our, this year will be our first year and this year we also uh, allowed our students to have um we didn't allow it it was it's an sat uh allow allowance that students get the instructions for the sat in spanish um, we're also being really intentional about having our Spanish for Native Speakers classes where that propels students into the, an AP and our school is an IB school as well. So having students access AP and IB uh, earlier and, and using their, their multilingualism in that way. Coming up, what we're hoping to do in the next year or two is also incorporate bilingual TAs into our classes and then um, really aspirationally, but I, I have faith that we'll be able to do this, is open up um, academic pathways for students to become certified interpreters So while they're in high school. And a lot of our students, as you know, are act as interpreters or cultural brokers in their households. So really acknowledging that experience and what they do and giving them the certification for that. Uh, Gustavo, are you talking to me? No, no, not at all. Please continue. No, sorry. Okay. Um, um, we're also not just looking to leverage their multilingualism, but also propelling our multilingual learners into rigorous academic classes. So um, opening up our programs of choice, our, our school has a lot of uh, special programs. So we have an IB program, a performing and visual arts program. Then we also have Signature, ROTC, and AVID, and and those kinds of things. So we're looking and we are being really intentional and strategic in recruiting multilingual learners as they enter our school, um, both from the middle school and students who come in, at, um, newly arrived students. Um, and that has also, in order, by doing that, we're also opening up scheduling pathways for, um, I'm sorry, scheduling opportunities for ESOL teachers to support our students in these programs of choice. So once they access the IB program or once they access uh, AP classes or something like that, that having the language support so that they're, um, they're really meeting with success once they're in there. And that also includes working with the, uh, the teachers as they deal with, um, start to have more diverse students in their classes and making sure that they're meeting the needs of those students. And then uh, we're scheduled, we have um, unique and flexible scheduling pathways. So I think Maria mentioned this uh, at the beginning, how we're willing to, to look at different ways that students can access rigorous classes, considering their academic backgrounds and opening access to the more rigorous classes. And then um, we're also looking at, we have a large percentage of students who are long-term English learners. Um, and we're defining that, <clears throat> excuse me, as students who've been in the ESOL program for more than six years and looking at having special uh, academic, or, or I'm sorry, liter classes that focus on academic literacy. So reading and writing for those students. And um, so that's what we're doing at our school and what we're hoping to do at our school to really open up access for our students because we have a lot of opportunities for students, but sometimes there are barriers that we're hoping to overcome and, and be more equitable in terms of who has access to what and, and using our students' assets that they bring to our school and to our students, uh, to, to our uh, academic um, institutions and, and making sure that we're meeting their needs that way. So thanks, and I'm excited to be here. So thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, uh, and now I want to call Esme. Esme, are you there? Yes. Please, you go ahead. Uh, so uh, to support what he was saying, uh, one thing that is really important, I mean, that was a problem for me when I was in high school, because I already graduated from international high school. Uh, the school, they need to make like more accessible schedules for people that are getting more older. Because you know, as Hispanic, we have to take care of ourselves and we do work in school at the same time. So uh, to do a school and work is kind of hard for us because we need to create uh, some space for school and some space for homework and some space for work. So that get a lot of stress on us, and that's why many Hispanic uh, teenagers decide to drop out of school because it it, uh, it, it create a lot of trouble to us. 
And uh, my suggest is to try to to make some pro better program for us, like as a teenagers, and try to find some solutions uh, how they can support us more on um, trying to do school and work at the same time. Because uh, when I was in school, yeah. I tried to do uh, some of the the support students, and it didn't. I I quite couldn't get in because I didn't have enough papers. They asked for a lot of papers that I couldn't afford. So sadly, I couldn't uh, get into that program. So I was wondering if you can take that on your list and make some purpose to do program for kids who do a school and work at the same time. That's my suggestion. Thank you, Nesme. I really appreciate that. Let's go and move to the second question of tonight. The question is the following. What engagement opportunities are offered to multilingual students, families, and communities? What is currently working well? What needs to be, to be better? And please remember to introduce yourself when you answer the questions for this question. We would like to hear from Anel. Anel, please, you go ahead. Eh, buenas, buenas tardes. Eh, mi nombre es Anel Rubio. Eh, tengo tres hijos que han estudiado acá en, en, en Easton. Eh, somos de Venezuela. Eh, tenemos ya cinco años acá y de verdad que en la experiencia de mis hijos en las escuelas, eh, ellos aprendieron ya a los seis meses, eh, mi hijo mayor aprendió el idioma. Verdaderamente, eh, yo quedé muy, muy, muy fascinada y muy agradecida. Mis otros hijos sí les costó un poco más, ya al año estaban hablando el idioma. Eh, dentro de las preguntas que, 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 que podrían mejorar, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es lo que está, func está funcionando bien actualmente? Bueno, la estrategia, cuando ellos llegan, se encuentran con, de verdad, con, con un, vamos a decir así, con un choque, porque no saben nada del inglés. Es a través de unos amigos, que son ya multibilingües, que les ayudan, les ayudan a traducir. Anel, poco poco, Anel. Me disculpas un segundito para que Diana te, te interprete. Muchísimas gracias. Diana, please okay. you go ahead. My name is Anel Rubio. I have um, three kids who have uh, gone to school here. Um, we've, we, we're from Venezuela. Um, and we've been here for five years. And um, the experience of my kids has been incredible because um, one of them um, learned English within six months when he was here. Um, and I'm very, very appreciative of, of that. The other two, it took them about a year, um, but they also learned it. It just took them a little longer. Um, in terms of the strategy um, or what's, what what's working um, um, when they come they are shocked because they don't know anything about the language they don't know anything and they rely on friends who are who already know the language who are already um, multilingual to help them immerse themselves in the language um, go ahead Anel please adelante Anel Ok, dentro de las ideas, eh, pienso que pueden eh, crear mecanismos que fomenten la participación de los papás también en las escuelas. Por ejemplo, que, que ellos, que los niños eh, expongan temas eh, relacionados con, con temas que, que ayuden, por ejemplo, a, sobre la concientización, porque estamos ahorita de verdad que este... Eh, eh, en la actualidad necesitamos 
eh, temas que, que, que fomenten, que creen, eh, concienticen en las familias sobre muchos tópicos, sobre muchos tópicos que, que, que puedan mejorar la educación de nuestros hijos, sobre la alimentación, la salud, drogas, bullying, todo eso. Entonces, que los maestros fomenten algunos temas, ¿verdad? Que participemos también los papás y así podamos poco a poco también aprender el idioma. ¿Qué pasa? Okay. Mis, hijos, mis hijos aprendieron el inglés, pero aquí en la casa hablamos español porque hay algunas palabras que ellos, ¿verdad?, eh, suelen olvidar. Entonces, eh, nosotros como papás, por ejemplo, yo he intentado y, es, y, y me he inscrito para aprender el idioma, pero a nosotros los adultos nos cuestan más. Entonces Anel, yo pienso, ok. Me disculpas un segundito. Uh, Diana necesita traducir. Diana, please you go ahead. Um, so in terms of things that can be implemented, um, we would need more mechanisms uh, for parents to be promoted and to participate in um, various themes like uh, family themes, things that the family can participate as a whole in um, and to promote conscientiousness uh, within the family so that we can participate and we as family members can learn the language um, right along with our students because as our our students are learning but we um, but we are at home so they're learning in school but we don't have the opportunity to learn with them so if Um, teachers and staff could promote that and promote activities and things that we as parents could participate in. That would help so that we can talk about topics like uh, family drugs, uh, pr uh, family problems, and things like that that could be, um, that could be promoted as a family. Thank you. Anel, please, adelante, continúa. Ok, sí, eh, se pueden crear dinámicas, dinámicas en, 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 la, en, en los colegios, donde por, yo sé que son muchos grados, ¿verdad? Son muchos los estudiantes, muchas secciones, pero de pronto por sección eh, o por grado, vamos a decir, octavo grado, todo octavo grado, eh, crea algunas actividades como poesías, historias, eh, que, que ellos expongan, ¿verdad? Y que el, se, puedan medir esos conocimientos también, todo lo que han aprendido del idioma, del inglés, como los tiempos verbales, eh, eh, fomentar las preguntas, las respuestas, todo eso en algunas dinámicas, eh, actividades, dice yo, Propongo crear poesías, campeonatos, historias, juegos, que sea algo dinámico y que esté en la participación de los papás. Por ejemplo, vamos a hablar sobre el tema de la salud. Entonces los niños, ¿verdad? Con los padres tenemos que crear todo ese tópico y exponerlo de tal manera que allí con esa actividad eh, nosotros podamos aprender un poco más. Y entonces así fomentar esa inclusión de los padres en, en el colegio de nuestros hijos porque nos hace mucha falta. Muchísimas gracias. Te agradezco muchísimo. Diana, please, uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, as I, as I said, I, I understand that there are a lot of grades and a lot of sections, but maybe creating school dynamics by grade, say maybe eighth grade, um, where we can create poems and stories and verbal questions and answers and games, and then um, kind of institute the, the participation of us as um, parents. Um, like for example, if we were gonna talk about health and we were, and So we would have to, we would have the theme of health and we would expose it or we would create uh, the games or we would talk about that particular topic. So that way we are included and we are 
um, we are as a, as a unit, so we are learning um, and being included right along with our students. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Anel, mil gracias. Te agradecemos muchísimo. Now I want to uh, welcome uh, an, a student from the International High School, Ashley. Ashley, please, you go ahead. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. Ashley Cifuentes. Uh, I'm a student and a 10th grader at, in, at the International High School. So um, some of the engagement opportunities that my school has to engage a multilingual student um, is SSO and counseling sessions. So uh, in my school, SSO stands for Student Support Office. Um, this system allows students um, a safe place where they can share their, where, where they can express their feelings as well as in-house assistance with a variety of social and emotional issues. Um, I've seen a lot of students that are um, reaching out to, to this specific um, system because sometimes they go through hard things um, and they want to be understood so um, this has really helped a lot in counseling sessions. This is another opportunity um, in my school and a lot of students um, receive counseling sessions during the school day um, and they, they, they are also being understood. And both of them are actually working really well because we have seen a dramatic decrease in, you know, trauma related incidents. So um, sometimes, you know, this is due to the dedication of our support of staff at my school. And I'd say that in order to improve, you know, communication and engagement um, in our community, there could be like community town halls. And this would be an effective form of community engagement because more people like to actually see and hear information in person than actually um, seeing information online. Um, also community like town halls would also like strength the trust between our schools, our parents and our, and our students. And you know, not just that, but like having information, like having community town halls, our parents, they would be more informed um, in like, you know, in what's going on, like activities, events, and the, cause sometimes when they are not informed and they want to participate, they miss you know, on those certain events that take place in their community. So if more, com if community town halls um, take place, then the amount of people that miss on certain events would decrease. And another thing I would say, it's maybe like a weekly podcast, you know, the, you know, this would be helpful in our community because um, it's just another way of like us uh, expressing, you know, outside of our traditional forms, like, you know, such as emails, phone calls. So that's my suggestion. Ashley, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate your intervention here. Thank you. So now we move to uh, question number three. Uh, and, and the question is the following. For multilingual students to be successful, we know ESOL educators and all other educators need to be prepared to work with English learners and their families. What are the teachers and schools doing to effectively support English learners and their families? What can teachers and schools do better and please remember to introduce yourself when you answer the question if you have not done so already. For this question, I'm going to start it to call Sandrine. Sam, Sandrine, please, you go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Sandrine Cheras. I'm a former ESOL student in Baltimore City Public School System. Currently, I'm a senior um, at Baltimore City College High School. Um, I'm also a member of SOMOS and representing community well here. I think this question is very important to keep in mind, especially when we are going, um, thinking about how to provide better resources for our English language learners and families. 
um, with my experience, I think it is really crucial to build this community and a sense of culture um, around ESOL families um, and students so we can feel connected and have a sense of um, belonging in the community. I think this is very important because most of the time ESOL students are neglected, neglected. That's why we see that the dropout rate for high school ESOL student is the highest out of all students, which is very sad because these students are the future generation and these, these kids are carrying our um, generation forward and these people would be the leaders tomorrow. Um, and I think for personally, I feel the um, teachers do try to have enough engagement and development for students, but this needs to be more on a... Um... Thank you. Something happened with it. Hello? Looks like she froze. Um... Yeah, she froze. So I'm going to continue. As soon as she back, we will give her a word. Larry. Please, you go ahead, Larry, ESOL coordinator. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. I'm really happy to be here tonight. I am the, uh, the supervisor, coordinator of English learning in Frederick County. Uh, and first of all, <clears throat> we, uh, we do our best to provide a safe, equitable, robust education through research informed instruction and system wide collaboration. And that collaboration is critical because uh, for the success of our EL students or our ESOL students, we need to have our EL teachers, of course, but not only them, all teachers, in fact, all staff members throughout the school to be on the same page so that we can help students and their families accelerate their learning. Our team here really does try to create a culture in which everyone works together. We know that is a very important key to this process. We, we also, we, we expect the very best from our English learners. We have high expectations. We have seen uh, the kind of, uh, what they can achieve and how high they can fly with the proper support. And part of that is providing our staff members, all of our staff members throughout the system, professional learning, it, it's a key. Uh, it's a key element in preparing teachers to work with uh, and support students who are learning English. I will say that the pandemic has made that a had made it a challenge uh, because with all that was happening for for parents, for students, and for for teachers as well, that was a difficult challenge. We embrace our system embraces translanguaging, say pedagogy. A, a way of teaching that views the students' bilingual uh, language abilities as a tremendous asset. In fact, it's extremely important. Uh, it helps the students, uh, it's essential in helping them make meaning and it expedites uh, their learning. Um, also, we really, it's very important that we welcome our families. We must learn as much about them. We try to learn as much about our families, our students, uh, their backgrounds, their culture, because we want to, it's a place for us to start to build relationships, to learn about each other, uh, because we certainly need a lot of that uh, in the world that we live in today. And uh, it's a way for us to begin earning trust. And I'll, I'll sum it up, but uh, Superintendent Chaudhry, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I also, I work for, for uh, Houston Independent Schools in, in Texas. We're very excited about dual language immersion programs. One of the issues that we have is recruiting biling enough bilingual teachers because we need more. Larry, so thank you that. very much. Yep. Really appreciate, Larry, your, your comments. Uh, now we are going to hear from Akane and Makoko. Yukiko, can you please uh, manage that? Unfortunately, I cannot speak Japanese, so you are in charge of coordinating with them, okay? So please, you go ahead. Can you let them know that they are ready? Hello, this is Yukiko Markin. I am a consecutive Japanese interpreter. Yukiko Markin to most of the people who are in the world. Thank you. Thank 
Akane and Makoko, are you there? Makoto san desu ka? Irashai masu ka? I don't see them um, on the screen, so they might not be on, unfortunately. Okay, if they um, arrive, we will call them when, when they arrive, okay? In case that it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go and call Lisa. Lisa, please, you go ahead. Yes, good evening, everybody. My name is Lisa Phipps. I'm a Spanish bilingual teacher assistant at Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Um, I work at a Title I school that has a 42% Hispanic population. I provide support through my role as a bilingual teacher assistant. I act as a liaison between the pre-K teacher and the parents. I communicate with the parents and I conduct um, the parent-teacher conferences um, between the parents and the teacher. Um, I work with our youngest students. We've heard a lot from our high school students, but I work with pre-K kids that are four and five years old. Um, and I'm gonna be brief, I also, um, I was, I was hired as a bilingual teacher assistant to teach Estrellita program, which is um, a dual language program. Um, and I have 11 children in the pre-K classroom that I um, teach every single day. We divide them into small groups and we are teaching these children their letters, their sounds, and are teaching them to read in their native language. Um, I think it's an excellent program, and I really think the way to prepare teachers um, to help the ESOL students and families is to hire more support staff. Um, we may be able to find bilingual teachers. I think that's fantastic. Um, but in lieu of being able to do that, um, I work with my teacher on a daily basis to facilitate communication between the parents, the children, and the teachers. Thank you so much. Lisa, thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, your comments. Now I thank want you. to welcome on a student called Jeon, Jeon Sam. Jeon Sam, are you, are you with us? Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning, Jeon please. Yeah. In Howard County, actually I'm not a student. I'm a, I'm a father of two sons, first and sixth grade. Yeah. Uh, my family came here uh, from South Korea three months ago, three months ago, and I want to share the experience and my opinion tonight. Uh, the first expression uh, was the English education and the evalu evaluation system was very systematic. So my two sons took the preliminary test to uh, their English, and the score was very reasonable and reliable. So uh, first I met the Korean speaking staff and teachers at their schools. It was very uh, good because uh, at the beginning, they, can, they could settle down very easily because of their help. And the teachers, the, the teachers provide many kinds of media and the information to study English. It, it, it was also very good. So there was no problem to study English. And uh, in three months, uh, I can see their improvement in their English, especially small talk. Uh, what can I, what can teachers and school do better? Uh, this is my personal opinion. Uh, yeah, the first thing is, there was no textbook in the American system. So it was a kind of uncomfortable and unfamiliar to me from uh, the South Korea. Um, so instead of the textbook, uh, students uh, have a, a lot of hands out, media links and the website information. So yeah, uh, it could be very good information for students and uh, parents. But if too much information or material are provided, it is not good because students and parents can give up to see that. So uh, as a parents, uh, if there is a textbook for uh, students, then parents can be aware of what they are doing and what's going on in the class. It will be very helpful. And about the home assignment, um, uh, as far as I know, the writing essay is very good way to improve 
the English skills. Yeah, I think uh, this kind of homework was the one of the best or effective way to improve English skills, maybe in the uh, past. Because uh, when we met new words that we look at in the dictionary, it can be very helpful for students. But nowadays, it is not that effective because uh, students have temptation to use Google Translate. Thank you, uh, John, John Sam. I just want to say, Kamsamani, that they're going to learn English from you. You speak uh, unbelievable. <laughs> so, so it, it doesn't, it sounds like, you know, you studied a lot of English in Korea. And so it sounds like the transition won't be that tough. Um, um, you know, I lost some of my Korean. I went to school with a lot of Korean people in, in, in Los Angeles. And so I know a little bit. So uh, I can just drop Kamsami that for today, but I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll practice some other things as well. Um, Gustavo, just so you know, as you move on, Samreen was able to log back in. So if you can loop back to her uh, when we finish this round of questions. Yeah. Okay. To, uh, can you repeat again? And super, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that one. Some, some, Samreen, uh, who was frozen well, in the middle when we kicked off this question, she was able to log back in. So while you finish the others, if you can come back to her so she can finish her thought. Okay, so let's go and listen in from uh, Kimber Kimberly. Kimberly, please, you go ahead and then from her. Kimberly? Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Kimberly Reese, ESOL educator, Prince George's County Public Schools, uh, seventh and eighth grade. I'm also a member of Community work group on English Language Learners, which is Community Well with Samreen. So um, I'd like to address specifically what I feel, um, well, it's not just me, <laughs> for educators, different stakeholders in Prince George's County, um, what schools can do. The first thing that we have is professional development for all staff of multilingual learners. Um, it's continually growing um, in the nation. And though not every district has a population comparable to Montgomery or Prince George's or even Baltimore um, City, the ML population, it's growing. And it would be proactive for Maryland to develop an ESOL certification for all staff, similar to what Florida and California have in place. That's number one. Also heard of a lot of info about dual language programs. As is referenced in the work group for English learners, developing programs that focus on our students as an asset and lead to bilingualism is essential, but that takes time. It takes development, it takes staffing, and it takes lots of training. So Maryland supports this effort already with the overall vision, but with helping with staffing, finding candidates who are bilingual and able to teach, we know that's a challenge. So. We understand innovative ideas or strategies may be needed to close that gap. Um, and because of the continuing increase of the ESOL population in Maryland, some educators have also advocated for an addition of at least three credits in ESOL or intercultural communication for teacher certification. We all remember the educators similar to the special ed credits that are needed also, just a suggestion. Another suggestion, a legal issues class at maybe the administration's or certification level would really, really help. Because honestly, too many administrators are clueless when it comes to servicing our ESOL students as per our existing federal laws in real time, blueprint included. <laughs> We're working on it in Prince George's. Last thing, staffing. As we all know, staffing and funding um, teachers or any employer, employee is a challenge, but we have to start looking at new ways to grow our own teachers from students and associate programs. I believe Tema had spoken about this earlier um, uh, to becoming paras. I think Lisa talked about that, but not just that, like have that be a pathway to certification through a partnership with the state, if that's not already in progress right now. But though all staffing is a challenge, ESOL is really hard to staff and finding ways on the state level basically to incentivize these positions could potentially make Maryland marketable for other neighboring states. And it will work on reducing the educator workloads that we are all currently facing. Thank you. Ms. Kimberly, thank you so much. Really appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Sabrine, welcome back. And I'm sorry that we meet you, but please, you go ahead. Hello everyone again. I am so sorry about the Wi-Fi. It's okay. Um, 
Um, as I was saying, I think it is necessary to involve um, our ESOL population in our community development groups. And I think in order to do that, we really need identity development for our ESOL students in our schools, um, as well as for teachers to be educated uh, in incorporating these cultures and communities into um, a larger community of our school or our system. And I think because of, for those reasons, we really need to incorporate the history and culture of our English language learners in our curriculum, because most of the time when kids want to feel belonged or connected to an idea or matter, we really look forward to being to learn the same things in school. Um, and I think personally, if whenever the whenever Asia or Pakistan comes in any conversation, I am all ears because I feel like when when people start talking about my culture or my community, it really makes me feel connected to those people, even if even if they are not from my culture. Um, and it just creates this sense of um, development and identity which creates a bonding between um, ESOL and non-ESOL students. And I think um, Kimberly touched on this a little. Um, we really need to make sure that, um, I mean, sorry, Kimberly touched that, you know, that ESOL students are the highest um, student, like, you know, the, the growing population in Maryland right now. And I think it is very important to make sure that their needs are met. Um, as I was saying earlier, that um, the dropout rate for high, uh, ESOL students is also very high. And we need to make sure that these um, the, um, education and support that they need and they deserve, um, which is crucial because most of the time these kids are often neglected. Um, and to make sure that these kids are heard, we need, really need to use community partners because community partners are a great source in community in reaching out and communicating to ESOL families. Because many of the time teachers or um, staff do not get enough information. But because of the connection with um, community partners, we really can develop um, a sense of um, bond with ESOL students. Thank you. Samreen, Thank you. are you ready? Samreen, are you ready for Ramadan? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And we have the final question right now, which is a very, very important question for everybody. The question is the following. If you had $1 million to invest, in your school or community, how would you spend the money? I want to ask, uh, kid, can you please, I know that you have, you, you have a million dollars and you, you need to tell me how you will spend the money. Kid, are you with me? Look at that, he's not. Esme, Esme, why you not go ahead? Can you guys hear me okay? Very well. Okay. So if I have one million dollars, yes, yes, <laughs> I will do many. I will do many things. I will do many things. But the most important thing, it will be provide more sources for the new and to let to capacitate uh, the teachers to include more uh, more Spanish and other cultures as a Hispanic people, because sometimes when we just came here, we feel like we wait, sorry, we greater when we speak our language or when we talk about our language because um, they, don't, they don't know that much about it. And sometimes I, I know they're not like being cruelest, but it sounds like they're being, because they're like, um, as many things that, and we're like, uh, is scared to explain or sometimes we don't have the uh the knowledge of english to explain how how we think will work for us so that's what i will do i will spend it on more sources for newcomers people to our school so they can learn more english and learn how important they are thank you nesme i really appreciate that i'm very i'm going to send you a check <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> Maria, Maria, how about you? Um, yeah, okay. Actually, I need to talk a lot. Uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, I have time. Um, as a refugee, because back in my country in Afghanistan, I, I didn't have lots of opportunities in the field that I'm interested in because being an astronaut, 
it was always like a dream for me. It's my childhood dream because when I was a child, I was always talking with the universe. I was talking with the stars, with the planets, and and it was somehow a fun for me. And I I just I mean uh, find uh, my interest. I can find my interest in, in just in these fields like astronomy, astrophysics, and these things. And I really want my school to have some um, programs that related to the uh, space, like some astronomy programs, astrophysics programs for uh, students like me that we like astronomy and astrophysics. Because I didn't have these opportunities in my country. And I really want to know about the planets about the stars, about their movements, about how they work, how they create it, and these all things, because I have lots of questions in my mind about the space and these things, because I'm really interested in this field. And actually, I never have heard about any Afghan to be an astronaut. And because that, I want to be the first, but not the last one. Yeah. <laughs> And um, there is all. Uh, there always should be someone to open the door, and I think I have that key to open the door for other um, Afghan ladies to um, to not only dream about their goals. To I, I want them to turn their dreams to their goals and to try their best in every situation and every year and improve yourselves and have self-confidence and always try their best to achieve their goals. And now I, I wanna have the opportunities here and I wanna just uh, grow in this field in astronomy and or astrophysics. Um, and also at the end, I wanna share that I can speak six languages. Wow. Um, Actually, we have two official languages in our country. So uh, we speak Dari Pashto, and I also know Uzbeki, Turkish, Azerbaijani, English, and now I took a Spanish class in oh in high school, and I wanna learn that, and that will be the seventh one. And um, I really like this language. It, it sounds amazing. Um, and yeah, and that's it. Uh, Maria, Maria. really quickly, Gustavo, I have to. Maria, can I shadow you? I like to shadow students. My God, I that is exactly what I'm going to say. Can I can I <laughs> shadow you? And I'm also gonna get your autograph now because you're gonna get really famous as the first astrophysicist and astronaut. So I need to know you now before you become too big <laughs> and it's hard to. Be <laughs> sure. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'm offering my services for Spanish classes if you need. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Maria, congratulations. You are a powerful girl and you are going to go Amazing. far, far. You Thank are so you. smart. Thank you so much. Thank I you. I want so. to hear from Jocelyn. Jocelyn, are you with us? Thanks for having me. Jocelyn, please, you go ahead. Adelante. Uh, she is not here, but I'm so I'm, I'm going to call Carolina. Carolina, can you tell us if uh, you had that one million dollar? What you are going to do as a teacher? Jocelyn is here, Gustavo. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And her, her, her interpreter um, Jasmine is here as well. Asian Creole. Asian Creole. I'm Jocelyn. Um, I promise you, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. I'm going Excusez-moi, my name is Yuzlen Dumet. My name is Yuzlen. 
c'est un honneur, c'est un plaisir pour me capable là dans rencontre là après midi hein. It is an honor, it is a pleasure for me to be part of uh, this program tonight. Pour me capable représenter famille haïtienne dans communauté haïtienne là. So I can represent the community, the Haitian community, the family. Pour me capable dire merci pour l'isol que nous mettez sous pied. Thank you for the ESOL that you guys have uh, put in. Qui aide nous en pile. That has helped a lot. Okay, moi j'ai entré ici avec en 2018, moi j'ai gagné trois timounes, j'ai passé dans ESOL. I came here in 2018, I had three children, all three of them was in ESOL. Deux finis avec ESOL, la troisième n'a pas pour finir avec elle. Two for the ESOL, but the third one has not finished. Uh, il a eu mal, du mal pour capable de passer le test jusqu'à présent. Um, he has been difficult for him to pass the test. Okay. Question que je vais poser, c'est un coup um, par an, nous-mêmes qui n'avons pas accès avec le computer, et puis l'anglais, si nous n'avons pas accès à nous pas parler l'anglais, ça fait nous pas aider si nous n'avons pas accès à nous n'avons pas accès à nous n'avons pas accès à My question is for is about the parents that does not have a computer and also does not understand the language. How are we able to help our students like we used to help them when we were in Haiti? Ça fait nous nous consentir que tout monde gagne la cune et puis pas avancer vraiment. Um and we notice that it's difficult for them to move forward because of this. Euh moi ta suggérer que gagne plus assistant qui parle anglais, qui parle créole bien et qui a capacité pour aider tout le monde dans la communauté. I could suggest that um, you have people speak English and Creole really well that has the capacity to help out the children. Oh. Merci en pile. Parce que nous comptons sur le reste de travail que nous allons faire que nous allons améliorer. Thank you a lot because I'm counting on the rest of the work that you guys are going to continue to do. Thank you. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, thank you very much. Thank you. And I think that we are 730 and before I have before we pass the final word to the su superintendent, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you because you are informing, you know, the, the schools, informing everybody about your thoughts, your ideas, and how we can move forward. And I can tell you that we are going to utilize all of these for our strategic plan. We are going to utilize all your ideas and your comments. And again, I just want to say thank you very much and to please complete and share and, and complete if you want the survey today at the MarylandPublicSchool.org forward slash survey is very important. And I just want to say again, one more time, mil gracias. Thank you very, very much. Superintendent, please, your final word. My final word is, um, this was amazing. You know, I there's so many quotes from tonight. I mean, Kimberly, you just gave me like a policy agenda to think about, <laughs> so I really appreciate that. The students, you are amazing. You are the future. You are uh, truly our country's uh, future depends on you. So we are excited. Um, Edwin left to go do his homework and he wants more hours in school. So, uh, you know, it's just amazing things are happening. Tema, I'm, I, I just was trying to make a laundry list of what your school is doing. And um, I want to think about how much more we can ensure at the state level that we support you and help scale uh, the work that you are doing. And um, like I said, what I will end on is, um, you know, learning English is a powerful, but learning English and preserving your language and your heritage and spreading it across our country is even more powerful. And this is where we are going. The future is bicultural, biliterate, and just amazing. And I look forward to, as your state superintendent, um, scaling this work. Um, and just thank you for your, so uh, your time today. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. You have a nice one. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Take care. We can live right now. Yes. 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 We can. <laughs> yes. Everybody can. Thank you. Bye. Adios. Bye. 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 Thank Adios. you for the opportunity. You, and I will email why I will do with a million dollars since I didn't have you, the chance. Carolina, to you tell me later please. on. Thank you very much. Okay. Please do. Please do. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.
Thanks. Gustavo, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you.